In today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you about the for loop in C++. My name is Eric, and let's get this started. Okay, so in the past two episodes, I've been teaching you how to use the while loop as well as the do while loop. The main difference between the two is that the while loop will run as long as the condition inside the parentheses remains true, whereas the do while loop will run at least one time no matter what, whether the conditional statement inside the parentheses is true or false. And then once it runs that one time, then it will check the conditional. And if the conditional statement becomes true, it runs it again and again like loops do. Otherwise, it will exit the loop and that's that. Now for the for loop, it's a little bit different. In fact, it's one of the more commonly used loops in programming. So be sure to pay attention. Now, unlike the other two loops, the for loop has more pieces to the puzzle. So let's look at the syntax. First off, to create a for loop, simply type in for followed by parentheses, and then opening and closing curly braces, or brackets, I don't know. But anyways, inside the parentheses, there are going to be three pieces to the puzzle, each separated by a semicolon. And no, it is not a typo, it is just two semicolons to separate the three pieces. The first part is your starting value. The second part is your conditional statement to tell the loop when to stop. And finally, the last part is incrementing the value. And then inside the curly braces is your usual statements. Nothing fancy over there. So really, the, the new part is really the structure and especially the three pieces of information inside the parentheses. So unlike the other two loops that we've been learning in the past, inside the parentheses, we don't have just a conditional statement alone, but rather a starting value which runs one time at the beginning of the loop and then followed by the conditional statement that will tell the loop whether or not to continue to run the statements inside the loop depending on whether it evaluates the true or false. And finally, the third part, it increments the value for the variable you declare in the starting piece of the puzzle. Okay, so let's clarify this a little bit more with an example. So to keep things simple to understand, let's make a simple number counter. Let's make our for loop count from one to 10, just to make it simple. So first off, let's create a variable x, for instance. You can name it whatever you want. Starting value one. And then we want to see out the value every time the loop runs. So C out X and line. And then followed by the conditional statement, which is the second piece of the puzzle. And again, we want our loop to run until it prints number 10. And then once it reaches 11, it stops printing. So in other words, don't print. Once it finishes printing number 10, stop the program. So X is less than 11, and then followed by the amount we want to increment X by. Because we're gonna count up to 10 starting at one, we want to increment it by the number one. So you could type it long-handed like this, which is x equal to x plus one, or you could do the short-handed way, which is x plus plus, which increases the value of x by one every time it runs the loop. So if we were to run this program, it should show us the results that we want. And as you can see, it shows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it stops. So if we look at what the program is doing, this is what it's doing. First off, it runs the program, it sees this line, and it was like, oh, okay, I see the for loop. This is how it's going to work. First off, it initializes the value x, which is our starting value, one time. And then next, it checks whether x is less than 11. So in this case, x is equal to 1, and 1 is definitely less than 11. So it runs the statement, C out x and then end line. And then once it finishes all the statements inside the curly brackets, it increases the value of x by one. So now it prints out x, which is one. So the display shows one and then it increments x. So x is no longer one, x is now equal to two. And then the for loop reaches the closing curly brackets. Now it goes back to the beginning because it's a for loop. It does things over and over, right? Until something stops it. So now because the starting value was already initialized, one time already, we don't have to run this part anymore. In fact, now we have to do the check with x. So x is less than 11. So remember we last left off x being two. So two is less than 11, yes. So C out the value two, and now increment it by one. So now x is equal to three. Now it goes back to the beginning. Does the check is three less than 11? Yes, print it out, increment it, now it's four. And then it does that all the way until x 
is equal to 11, and 11 is not less than 11, but rather 11 is equal to 11. Because that condition failed, it no longer runs this statement. So it will not print out the number 11. It would just stop at the previous value, which was 10. And that's when the loop ends, and that's when the program finishes. Now, if we were to comment this and put it aside for a while, I wanted to tell you that you can actually achieve the same effect as a for loop, but instead using a while loop. This is how you do it. First off, create your starting value or your variable that will represent your counter. So in this case, let's keep it the same, x equal to 1, and then followed by the while loop. So while, and then your parentheses and curly brackets. So inside the parentheses, as we've learned in the past, you put your conditional statement. So in this case, x is less than 11. So int x equal to 1, while x is less than 11, run the statements inside. So c out x and line. And then don't forget to increment the x value. And voila, as you can see, these five lines of code represents these three lines of code for the for loop. And it does the exact same thing. So if I were to run this program, it should show the same result. And as you can see, it shows the exact same result. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the program ends. Perfect. So just to give you a quick overview or a refresher, int x equal to 1, it gets, it gets initialized once. And then inside the while loop, it checks, OK, is x less than 11? So 1 is less than 11. OK, that's good. Print it out. And then now increment the value of x by 1. So x is now 2. So end of the while loop. Now we go back to the top. OK, it's 2 less than 11. Yes. OK, print out 2. And now increase x. So x is now 3. So now you go back to the top. And then it goes over and over and over until x gets incremented and becomes 11. And 11 is not less than 11, but rather equal to. So this condition fails, which causes the loop to finish, and then the program ends there. That concludes our tutorial for the for loop. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments below and stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to be teaching you a little bit more about the for loop as well as doing stuff with arrays. Yes, it is the return of the arrays. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.